I am still playing with the A to D converter as you can see right here. I've added another resistor or so and over here I've added a Peltier device. And also, most of this is about the software. I've expanded the channels, so now I've got all eight channels. I am still playing with the A to D converter, as you can see right here. I've added another resistor or so, and over here I've added a Peltier device. And also, most of this is about the software. I've expanded the channels, so now I've got all eight channels. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I've added averages across the bottom and also I'm printing it to a file and I've made the program very short. So that's where we are today. Uh, let's run it and see what it does. And we'll click run, run module, and as you can see it going down the line and I'm using the Peltier cooler like a thermostat. You can see my hand on it changes the value and taking it away and then the channel average is there. So the first one is our photoresistor, second one is a, a plain resistor, the next one is the Peltier. The next three are nothing, they're just open, uh, open uh, channels and you can see how they kind of float around. And then the last two are fixed resistors of roughly the same value. And as a quick look, here is the file. You can see that uh, the numbers across here are the same as the numbers across here. It says channel averages, channel averages. So I printed this to a file, and the file is the exact duplicate of what's on the screen. But uh, just to show you we can do that, we can print it out to a file. Okay, so let's go look at the software, which is the big thing for today. So this is all about this bit of software, and as you can see, it's not very long. So this reads all eight channels one after another and it just keeps going around in a loop and it'll do it X number of times however many loops you want. Uh, I won't go through all this detail again, that was from the last video so uh, if you need to know that that's where you can find it. Uh, let's just get to the nitty gritty. I'm going to import the time, import the SM bus again like last time. Uh, I'm going to grab the bus value. This is the hardware address that 0 hex 48 that's the address from using an I2C detect minus Y1 command. Here's where it starts to change. I'm using a binary list of the channels. So I've got them all set up. Rather than hard coding them uh, one at a time and just repeating the code over and over again, I'm going to use this channel list and I'm going to use a loop and I'm going to go through the channels uh, one after another and then start over again and go back. I'm going to keep track of the channel number I'm on. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's 8 total. Uh, this is where I'm going to store the raw 12-bit output. And I'm going to get the averages this time. The program was so short I decided to lengthen it a little bit by adding some averages to it. So I'm going to keep the averages. This is the number of data points that the program will take. So in this case it's 50. And I'm also going to write the information to a file. So the first thing we do is we write the header, which is just channel 0, channel 1, channel 2, etc., with tabs in between. And then I'm going to print it to the screen also, same exact format. And here we go into the uh, main loop. And it's just a for loop. And I'm going to do data points times 8 times because there's 8 channels, so I have to go through the loop. Uh, eight times to get each channel done and then times the total number of data points. So here again we do that strange thing where we write to the bus the address which is the hexadecimal 48, the channel list which is a set of binaries and then the channel number we're on so like channel 0, channel 1, channel 2. So we're going to go grab the correct binary string out of the list we saw earlier. Going to do some sleep time just for settling. Again, from the last video, I'm not sure if this is necessary. It's in the TI manual. Uh, I'm not sure I'm reading it right, but I put it in there. And uh, it, okay, so that's that's that. Then I'm going to read the data back from the uh, bus. So the first write tells the bus, okay, get ready. I need to read this information and then I'm going to go read it. So I'm going to go grab it from, again, uh, that hexadecimal 48 and from the channel list where I am, that's that binary code, and I'm going to grab two bytes. 
And again, I'm not going to go into detail on this. I'm going to grab those two bytes. One of them is most significant byte. One of them is least significant byte. 16 bits. I've got to turn it into 12 bits. And that's what I'm doing right here. And I'm just going to store it in that uh, list by channel number. And again, I'm going to do the uh, uh, oring, uh, sorry, anding to keep the uh, leftmost four bits. And I'm going to discard the rightmost four bits. And then I'm going to shift the whole thing over. And then I'm going to add it to the uh, add the uh, least significant byte to it. So then I'm going to keep that number. I'm going to just add it. So I'm going to make an average. So I'm just going to add all these up. So this is a separate variable. You can see it's called average. And then I'm going to increment where I am in the far of the channels go, the 0 through 7. And if it's greater than 7, this is a circular uh, loop, if you will. So I'm going to go from 0 to 7, 0 to 7, 0 to 7. So if it's 7, I need to reset it, go back to 0. I'm going to, if it's uh, the 8th uh, time through, I've got all my data for that loop. And so I'm going to print it and I'm going to write it to the file. And then finally, the last thing I do is I write the channel averages. And I write the header and then I write the channel averages. And I write them both to the file and to the screen. I close my file, otherwise I won't have any data in it. And then I print done and that's it. So this is a, as you can see, it's a very short uh, version of the last bit of software and this one reads all eight channels and it will read them however many times you want, take however many settings. You could add time to this so that it looped a certain, like every five minutes it would uh, take a get data point or whatever. So yeah, that's, uh, that was uh, it for today and uh, again another experiment with the analog to digital converter. Well, I hope you found it interesting in your Raspberry Pi experimentation.